Hello and welcome back to our physics series in the guise of a pinball game. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing today. So last time we made rebounders and in this episode we're going to continue with that and add on to our head events how to do scoring. So when the ball hits one of our rebounders it adds a score and so on. And we're also going to add some variables in here to allow us to customize and tweak our rebounders as we go throughout the development process. So let's jump in and get started. So as mentioned in the last episode, I did play around with the uh, layout of our pinball uh, environment, uh, but that's it. I haven't done anything else. And the thing I want to do here is I'm going to make the rebounders tweakable because if I was to play this thing, you'll see what's going to happen here is it's going to uh, build up a lot of momentum in the ball as it bounces around and it will eventually fly off the map eventually. Um, it does weird stuff like that. Um, so we want it to uh, tweak that um a lot down as well now rather than going through and tweaking every single rebounder um as we need to what would be a better way of doing this is by changing this value here to be a variable that we can then expose and uh, modify so i want this to be at least a factor of let's say 1000 so i'm going to do negative one in there instead and add a pin convert that to a float and then promote that to a variable and that would be rebound strength. And the rebound strength here, what we're gonna do is we can compile it and set the default value of this to, as you saw, it's 500, like 500,000. We wanna make it a little bit less than that probably by default. So I'm gonna do 250, but I wanna make that editable. So I can now go to each of my rebounders and tweak the rebound strength for each one. So for example, these uh, pegs, for example, can have less rebound strength. So I'm bring it down to maybe uh, 100 instead. So if I go ahead and push play now and see what that does. And you see it bounce up the ball just fine. So you can modify the rebound strength quite easily, which is what we want. Now, how to generate points based upon those hit events. So the hit events will trigger, as we mentioned in the last episode. What we're going to do now, though, is make it add to a score. So I'm going to keep the score on the player controller. And then here we're going to have the points. Oh, that's a function. Variable would help. Points. And that's going to be a integer. And on our functions here, we're going to add a function here on here saying add points. And simply all we're going to do is drag out points and add to it as an input on our add points function. So if you just drag and drop a pin onto the function, it will add the pin for you. And we're going to call this one points to add. You to take the current points, add on the new points, and then we want to set it back to our points variable. And this is eventually going to affect things like UI. So what we will need to do is go to event dispatchers and tell it when the points have been updated or changed any kind of way. So I'm going to do on points updated. And we're going to drag that in and can call that there. Now, we can also think of things like, well, what would be useful as a bit of information based upon what this event dispatcher has been described to do? So on points updated, it might be useful to actually send through what are the new points. So I'm going to set my event dispatcher, go to inputs, integer, and call it one total points. When you update this, you'll see it won't update here. And if you compile it, you get an error. To fix that, just right click and refresh the node. The error will go away. We can now plug that into our points and it's updated as such. Now for this as well, I'm going to print string whilst we are developing this. So I'm going to print string my points like so. Okay. 
Now, to actually add the points on, I'm going to go to my rebound object. And on the hit event here, I'm going to get access to that uh, node. Now, that's in the player controller. So every time this happens, we're going to get the player controller. We're going to cast to our pinball player controller. And we're going to tell this thing to add points. Now, one thing that might be better to do here is rather than doing this and this to cast out, we want to do that only once, really. We don't need to do it multiple times. So what I can do here is just disconnect that from that. Go to the begin play node. And just store it as a variable. And with it stored as a variable, it means I can use it whenever I like now without having to recast it. So get PC pinball and points to add will come through as a score. Now the score here, what we're going to do is we're going to um, make it actually use the rebound strength. So let's take the rebound strength and put that into the points to add and create as an integer, it will truncate it, which basically means it's going to get rid of the decimal point part of the number. Okay, so let's see this in action. We should see print strings happening every time it adds points to the score. Or not. Access none trying to add points. Okay, so something went wrong here. Event point, add P PC pinball, player controller, player controller. Okay, so we've got a problem here where it's not detecting the uh, player controller. And I think the reason why is because I think way back in episode one, I forgot to change the project settings to use our new game mode. So, yep, I'm going to change it to our game mode pinball, which in turn has the correct player controller. Now, let's test it out. We should see the print strings happening, hopefully. Yep, there you go. We've got 250 points there. That will now increase as we bounce around more eggs and rebounders, things like that. And there we go. Excellent. Okay, so we can now add points and score based upon the hit events that are happening inside of our scene. And because we've got hit events, you can now tie that to sounds, lights, other things. Whatever it is you want to do, we can now tie that to that hit event and give better feedback to the player, indicating they just scored some points. So it's looking pretty good so far. And I think the only thing we're really missing now are the flippers. So in the next episode, we're going to go through and showcase how we're going to build the flippers and how to make them flip. And part of that is going to be using the physics actions as well as making sure that the shape and design of our pinball build looks and reacts according as we want it to so in between now and next episode i'm going to build out our play field here to make it fit to more conical shape at the bottom so the ball will go towards the flippers and we can test the flippers out um but yeah try it out um, messing around with your own play field design what you want to do and uh, we'll go from there if you want to support the channel and see that next episode early, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely, where you can find all our videos early from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.